But unfortunately, it'll never happen. Front! Punches! And punches! And it's over! I think it's gonna be over. Aguero in big trouble against the ropes! I have to say, there seems an element of genuine hate between these two, Ambrose. For sure. I don't hate the man. Just imagine if you bought a ticket. Stop it, Frank. You can stop it any time. Castillo's in trouble. Leak steps in. And the fight is over. Oh! Welcome back to the Legendary Nights podcast, The After Show. This is The After Show to cover the tale of Willie Pep and Sandy Sadler, two of boxing's legendary fighters, the finest fighters in the lower weight categories that I'm happy to be discussing with Luke, who's heard the story, who always brings a unique take onto the show and to the fighters that are involved in these episodes. So again, as always, Lukey, thank you for coming on. And I'm going to hit you with this first question straight away out of the blocks because our thoughts, feelings and opinions at the end of the Pep Sadler episode were about where Sandy Sadler sits as one of the greatest fighters and featherweights because many people regard Willie Pep as the greatest featherweight of all time. But Sandy Sadler beat him on three separate occasions. So where does Sandy Sadler sit in the realms of boxing greatness? Well, he sits at the top. If you want an answer, I don't know. But I think this is one of those things where Sandy Sadler was very good at winning fights, but he didn't have like a very good way of being defined. Whereas Willie Pep is kind of viewed as the originator of defense. And I think that because it's easy to explain what Willie Pep did and sadly, Sandy Sadler, maybe more nuanced uh, in an explanation Maybe Pep's legacy is partially because it's just easy to explain his greatness a little bit. I think that's the biggest thing that maybe your average boxing fan would take away is that he's probably the original defensive master in the sport of boxing. People consider him great historians, past and present, consider Willie Pep to be the greatest defensive fighter of all time. Arguably, some might say that maybe Floyd Mayweather is in with an argument for that in this day and age, but Willie Pep, to me, doing the research on this episode and Willie Pep in general, it appears for me to understand now why people have always had that opinion of Willie Pep. Now knowing what I know about Willie Pep and about his life and about his epic fights with Sandy Sadler, I now understand why people consider him like the greatest featherweight of all time. I mean, obviously the story that we told in the episode was about Willie Pep being the only fighter to ever win a round without throwing a punch just solely on defense and that was an amazing story and I I think it kind of puts to bed a little bit any myths and conspiracies that maybe people have around that because it was really well explained by by Pep himself and, and many of the journalists who were around at the time. Yeah I mean I think that there's something to be said for like a legacy outside of the ring and Pep built a legacy that it's like any like it's kind of like Floyd Mayweather built this aura of the undefeated record. So you're going to look at Marciano and Floyd Mayweather if you bring up an undefeated record. Willie Pep kind of created like ground zero for the greatest defensive fighter. And that'll always have him in modern conversations because you're going to have the purists say, well, if you don't know who Willie Pep is, you're stupid. And I think the problem is Sandy Sadler. It's like he hit hard, but. Where does Sandy Sadler's power fit in the range of the Mike Tysons and stuff? I think with Sandy Sadler, because he fluctuated throughout the weights and he was successful at a higher weight than featherweight, I think that is one of the reasons why I consider him to be one of the greatest of all time. He wasn't just a fighter in the featherweight division who beat the great Willie Pep more than once. He was a fighter that moved up in divisions, you know, very few divisions that they were at that time, and he was able to go on to beat other fighters of his era and do it successfully. And I think that's one of the things I took away from it. I kind of left the episode feeling like Sandy Sadler doesn't get 
as much recognition and that he always lives in Willie Pep's shadow because of how much Willie Pep did through his career. I mean, the guy had over 200 fights, well over 200 documented fights. And they're just the documented fights as well. I mean, we know these periods in history, there's a lot of undocumented records about a lot of these fighters who, you know, Jack Dempsey's another one, you know, who we've covered where, you know, he's arguably had about 100 fights. Some of them weren't recorded. So I think it kind of... It made me feel a little bit sad that Sandy doesn't get the credit I genuinely believe he deserves, which is why I was hoping that people would take that away from the episode and actually go and do a bit of their own research and, you know, have a look at what Sandy Sadler was all about. I think the the comparison is Ezard Charles. Like you and me probably go, man, that's a great fighter. But a bunch of people, if they saw the name, they'd go, OK, Mike Tyson, Ezard Charles, Muhammad Ali, Willie Pep. Sandy Sadler, they'd probably think Sandy Sadler and Ezra Charles, oh, those are good fighters, but I want to jump to the Marvin Hagler name. For some reason, some of our legends, maybe it's because documentation and the stories weren't told in that time for a modern person, but some fighters who were historically great somehow slipped through the cracks of uh, kind, of be, kind of being immortalized in our sport. What do you think it was from what you know of Sandy Sadler? What do you think it was from what you know and what you've heard in the story, that was good enough for him to beat the great Willie Pep, the guy that was the defensive master. And he didn't, like I said, I keep saying it, he didn't just beat him once. He beat him more than once. So for him to do that the way he did, to me kind of echoed how great he was of a fighter. But what do you think it was about Sandy Sadler that he had that Willie Pep wasn't able to overcome? You know, because it felt like Sadler was Pep's bogeyman. I mean, he feels like Terrence Crawford to me in the sense that he was a true fighter in the word, in the sense of it, a dog. He'd get in the ring and he wanted to beat the other man. But I think that he's also someone where it's like from a storyteller perspective, it's hard to tell stories because it's like for him, the story began and ended in the ring. And I think for a guy like Pep, who was more of a showman, it was the spiritual difference in the two fighters that made it so Willie Pep could not beat Sandy Sadler and Sandy Sadler at his number. I think it was a spiritual approach to this, to the way they fought. What do you think, like, honestly, looking at the, 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 the story, the tale, the fights, that, you know, we should be looking at Sandy Sadler in particular in a, in a more respected light? Do you think there's cause there for more people to be sort of champion some of these fighters from years gone by where you can actually look at them and make them modern day comparisons like you just made one there about Terence Crawford and I think there's probably other modern day comparisons you can make for both fighters but for for me it kind of boils down to like why why and what is it about certain fighters in boxing history that denies them the opportunity to be as well regarded as some of their counterparts who they end up in the ring with like is it because Sadler wasn't as charismatic outside of the ring as Willie Pep was was it was what was the reasons I mean what do you think the reasons could possibly be why he doesn't get acknowledged the same way Pep does well it's like think about this in 20 years, Terrence Crawford will probably be not really brought up. Donald Curry doesn't really get brought up. Uh, there's lots of guys like Larry Holmes gets brought up just to be mentioned that he doesn't get brought up. Like Larry Holmes at least immortalized himself by saying that in every era. Paul Williams is a guy like this. Sergio Martinez. There are purist fighters that don't really capture the imagination of the fans beyond being a fighter. And I think for that reason, you and me look at the talents and say we should really look at them as that. But the fans, a group of fans, want some of the theatrics that go along with the achievement. And I think that also sometimes beating a guy like Willie Pep, it works against you because there's a lot of fans that wanted to see Pep win a fight and just winning him over and over. History is not always fond on the guy that can beat those type of fighters. I'd agree with that statement at the end there. And the reason I agree with that is because our final episode of the season, which is Jack Dempsey and Gene Tunney, the tale that you guys will be listening to when it gets released next week, you'll hear how a similar thing happens to the fighting Marine, Gene Tunney. I mean, 
I had the similar conversation with Johnston in that episode that we recorded about how Gene Tunney doesn't get regarded as well as Jack Dempsey because Gene Tunney was the man that beat Dempsey. Gene Tunney not just beat him once, he beat him twice. And then obviously there's this whole story around the long count, which we did cover in that finale episode. So, you know, there is other comparisons that I can I can look at like that around similar times where some of these fighters can cause these huge upsets or cause these little ripples within the sport but it actually works against them as you've rightly just pointed out like nobody wants to support them because they've just beat the man who was the man they was the man they was the charismatic character they were the ones that were all over broadway and hollywood and you know they were the ones that you'd see out and about and remember this is a totally different way of living at the times these fights were taking place so when you get a guy in sandy sadler who is a guy of color he was a black man in a time where racism was hugely rife not that it isn't today it still is but even even so back then it was 10 probably 10 times worse and more out there and and sort of vocalized than what it is today so for a guy like that they probably looked at him and and, and probably went well he's just another black guy that we don't want to see be a champion the same way they didn't want jack johnson to be a champion but yet joe lewis was able to do something different in his career he was able to sort of relate to to every color and creed but yet someone like a sandy sadler because he's not the way people want him to be and he's not the right color of skin, they just dismiss him. Yeah, I mean, racism is real, you know, and especially in this era. I think that we hit on the two things that hurt Sandy Sadler's career. People were racist and he beat up kind of the great white hope and that was probably not viewed as a positive. And number two, you look at a guy like Alexander Usyk, he beats Joshua twice, and I don't think he'll ever really get the credit for what he achieved. Sometimes purist fighters don't get accolades and then add to it a very racist world. And a guy from Harlem beating up kind of the, the golden child of the sport at the time. I, I think that Sandy Sadler is going to be one of these guys that never really gets appreciated for what he did. Because if Pep had to beat him in one of those fights, he would have been viewed as like, oh, my God, look at what he overcame. Yet every fight kind of kept getting made to see, in my opinion, if Pep could eventually win. I think one of the things that I look at now is like, yes, both of these men were inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. I think in its inaugural year, 1990, Sandy Sadler was one of those that was inducted in there. So he was recognised. But this is 32 years ago. Now we're living in a different time yet again. And I feel, and, and Johnston feels when we put these episodes together, we're putting it together in a time where people genuinely can't be bothered to go back and look at some of these fighters. You only get the true boxing fans the true historians of the sport that really want to know the ins and outs of every nook and cranny about every fighter about every period of time about every governing body organization or whatever it was that was going on at the time there's a very select amount of people that go out there and do that and then you've got the majority of people that are just blind and ignorant to fighters like sandy sadler and willie pep and don't appreciate how good they both were in their own right. Now, the fights themselves were, three of them were fantastic. The The last one, the final fight, was just like a wrestling match. There was so many dirty tactics from both men going on in that fight. And this day and age, it'd be automatically disqualification for the pair of them. That fight would have been called off after round one. But taking that aside and looking at the three fights out of the four, there was three fantastic fights there between them in which you had a guy who was so defensively good that, you know, you didn't really know how to beat him. There wasn't a way of beating this guy. But yet Sandy Sadler, who was really unorthodox for the weight that he was in, very tall, very gangly for the weight that he was in and had that sort of natural advantage. I mean, if he was around fighting today you'd probably be looking at him as like a super lightweight you know maybe even pushing up to to welterweight whereas obviously willie pep was a, a much shorter man he was very much fit in the featherweight division so it was like willie pep was fighting a, a super lightweight really in, in in that term because 
you know, he was going up against a guy effectively who was already moving up the weights to get other challenges. So does that make the feat any less for Sandy Sadler? Does it make the achievement any less for him? Or does it make it more of an adverse situation where we would look at that today and go, well, Willie Pep was fighting a guy that was technically about two or three weights above him. So really, you couldn't have expected anything less. I mean, whatever the weight class is, we can't move the goalposts. You know, if you make the weight and that's the rules, that's what it is. I mean, I think the equivalent is Paul Williams or Sebastian Fandora now. It's just like we're seeing these type of guys currently that are making these crazy weights and are bigger. I just think that, you know, we pick and choose which guy we want to call a weight bully. There's never like a a universal feeling on it. I feel like with this tale, like looking back on it now and looking back on everything that we've gone through in that particular episode, I think what we've unearthed here is various elements, which I feel like we've, you know, we have kind of covered quite a lot in this episode and I hope it's brought a lot of thought provoking questions for for you guys that do listen to us and maybe it might make you go out there and actually look at you know these guys fights the ones that are available to watch and look at the careers and look at the descriptions you know go and actually appreciate what these two guys have done in the ring i i just walked away from this episode feeling like it was a brilliant tale of two guys from two different backgrounds as it always is and it was a guy who was expected as in Willie Pep was expected to just continue on this role of being this great fighter this great champion the guy who not many people was able to beat and then in comes Sandy Sadler this unorthodox fighter who was able to go in there and, and he just had his number it was like every fighter I think in their boxing career at some point or another barring the exception of one or two maybe nearly every fighter has a bogeyman nearly every fighter has a guy they share the ring with who literally just has their number a lot of the time these fighters get away with one they get away with these decisions and they're able to move on in their careers but there are them few select occasions where justice does prevail and you see some of these fighters even now like the prospects who get to like 20 and 0 and have not really fought a certain caliber of fighter and then they fight a guy who's a really difficult fighter and then they come up short and then you know you see him try to rematch him or the the they never go back to fighting them because they know that this is a guy that no matter what level they are at they just cannot beat them and i think you find that in the sport and that's kind of what i found with his tale is like willie pep bumped into a guy in sandy sadler who was he just had his number he knew how to beat him no matter what willie pep did what adjustments he tried to make sandy sadler just had his number Yeah, I mean, there's always someone that's going to look at you as an opportunity and not as someone to be feared. And this was a case where Sandy Sadler wasn't fighting the name, he was fighting the man. I think that's a pretty good way of putting it. I think that's a a, a really good statement to sort of say to people listening that, you know, this, this, this was the tale. This was what it epitomized and it presented you two different characters, two different stories and a tale which I think led me to believe that there was certainly hope out there for a lot of these underdog fighters, but I always worry that they might not always get that recognition, just like I feel Sandy Sadler now doesn't get that recognition that maybe some of these guys that that do, like Willie Pep. I think one of the quotes we took in that, that episode was, Bert Sugar and Teddy Atlas both had a difference of opinion on who they thought the best was. Teddy Atlas thought it was Sandy Sadler. Bert Sugar felt it was Willie Pep. And they both had that solidified select opinion that, you know, this was the best guy in the division. This was the best guy of the time. But the general consensus is that Willie Pep is the the greatest featherweight of all time. and, And Sandy Sadler doesn't really get a sniffing or a saying in that in that argument you know, in the general sort of population, the general consensus of it. And uh, this is this is why I like to bring a lot of these tales to light. As I always say in these after shows, the reason I like doing them and these particular stories is because I always feel like it, it brings to light at least one of the fighters in a way which we feel like it will help fans who listen to the show 
go out and actually do their own research and actually go and watch some of the fights and actually read about them or go and buy their autobiographies or read them online or whatever and actually then appreciate these fighters for who they were in their careers so i'm really happy that you know he's been perceived in in that particular way by the people that have been listening to the episode in summary luke here what would you say would be a good way to put a synopsis on this tale sandy sadler's just better he won the fights <laughs> like it's the argument closed you we we don't look at skill sets we look at results and i think that sandy sadler was the better fighter because he could beat the other guy and to me if you can beat the other guy in boxing you're just the better fighter that's just the way it is and i think that the myth and the legend of Willie Pep being one of the greatest fighters we've heard. He won a round without throwing a punch. He he became a brand of you've got defense like Willie Pep. Even if you don't know how he fought, you understand that means good defense. Sandly, Sandy Sadler never got that aura, so he never gets the longevity and the respect in history. And that is a good way to summarize this particular tale. And You know, I've enjoyed putting that particular episode together. I thought it was great for people to listen to. People have fed us back and told us that it's been been a really good episode to listen to. So I hope it does, you know, whatever point people are listening to it at, whether it's now or whether it's in 12 months, 18 months, two years down the line, I do hope it has that same impact and same effect on people that they're actually going back and really appreciating not just Willie Pep because he's the name, he's the brand of the time, but they appreciate Sandy Sadler for all that he was and all that he could be. And just another side note before... I end it. Something that Sandy Sadler said himself years after the fact of these fights happening was that he genuinely felt himself that racism played a big part in why he wasn't acknowledged in the same regard as Pep. He had that same opinion, Lukey, of the fact that, you know, I beat him three times. I beat this guy three times out of four fights. But yet, why is he the one that is being introduced first at all these galas and these after-dinner speaking shows? Why am I not getting that actual recognition? And it was all about the racist element of the world at the time. And he put it right, nail on the head. And I think that is a sad part of the whole tale is that Sandy Sadler was denied the recognition he deserved because we live in such a racist world. And I think the other big issue, right, is if it's a racist world and there's limited vessels for distribution, it comes down to the thoughts and opinions and strength of media members who had the selective outlets. You go to select magazines like Ring Magazine or whatever to get your boxing content. In the modern era, we have people with different opinions, for better or for worse, where your opinions can be heard. I think a big issue is Sandy Sadler and a lot of his views were not represented or heard because his views didn't coincide with maybe mainstream media outlets at the time along with the way he looked, which is really sad. It is really sad, and unfortunately, he didn't live in this day and age because a fighter like him in this day and age would certainly be causing ruptions in the sport and with the amount of oversaturation of media there is in boxing today. You know, you know for a fact someone like a Sandy Sadler would be absolutely fawned over by the various channels that are out there, the various mainstream media that cover the sport, and you rightly said there was only a select amount of media that covered these fights at this time i mean you'd have what 10 to 20 main media moguls sat there at ringside for fights like this in that era now you could get anything up to a hundred different media i wouldn't call them personalities but i'd certainly call them people that have a website or a channel or a podcast like we do and there's that many of them now that the coverage is is just is so widespread for better or for worse that someone like a Sandy Sadler probably would be fawned upon and probably would be given the recognition that he never got in the time that he was boxing and living in. So it is a sad part of the whole thing, but I genuinely hope that people have taken away from this episode the fact that he is a great fighter, a legendary fighter, and that Willie Pep is Willie Pep, and he'll always be a legendary fighter. No one will ever take that away from him. I was more going down the avenue of making sure that someone like a Sandy Sadler 
was given his just even way after this guy is not on the planet anymore. I feel like boxing fans do need to look at him. They need to study him. They need to study his style and, and appreciate what he did for the sport in his time. And go and while you're there, go and look at Willie Pep. You know, go and have a look at what he was good at and what he could do. And the, you know, the way he set the tone for some of the defensive masters that came after him. So. It's been great to have you on, Lukey. Thank you so much for bringing your opinions to the table for this after show. It's been a pleasure doing the after shows. We've got one more left for the final episode of season three. And as always, if you've enjoyed it, if you've got any thoughts or feelings or opinions on it, you know what to do. You can tweet us at Legend Night Pod on Twitter or you can tweet us on btr boxing pod or you can message us on facebook or you can message us on insta or you can even find us on tiktok now we've actually got a tiktok page as well with a lot of the audio clips on there or if you're looking at this and listening on youtube then just drop a comment below about what your thoughts feelings and opinions are it's been a pleasure thanks for listening to this after show and we'll see you next week for the final one